welcome back to forum chess club in this video we will take a look at the nimzo indian which is the most popular reply to the queen's pawn opening it begins with the moves pawn to d4 knight f6 pawn to c4 e6 knight c3 and now bishop to b4 during this video we will take a look at the most interesting and popular lines for both the sides in the nimzo indian let's take a look black's use of the pinning move bishop to b4 introduces two significant hassles for white Firstly, the bishop on the b4 prevents white from stretching out in the center with the move e2 to e4 that because of the pin at, pin on the knight at the moment. The second factor which black is taking account of with this move b4 is that the threat on to capture the knight on c3 at some point and that gives double c pawn on the c c file. Now, what is white's argument going to be in this position? First of all, he does still maintain a space advantage thanks to the duo of pawns on the d4 and c4. It is due to the factor that black will have some problems developing the remainder of his pieces. Secondly, white can still aim to advance the pawns forward at some point if black does not play carefully. So white still has a space advantage here. The second factor that can uh, work to white favor in this possibility of gaining the bishop pair, perhaps he will either provoke the bishop with the move uh, a3 either now or at some later, later other stage in the game and then accept the bishop pair and he may find that blacks may unprovoked capture on c3. Uh, in both the cases, uh, white will have the dark square bishop and the light square bishop versus a knight and bishop. Uh, due to this, if the game suddenly opens up, the dark square bishop uh, could be the monster. Also, the bishop pair also uh, offers some great chances in the end game. Today, we are going to restrict ourselves to understand the most popular options for white, beginning with the move queen to c2. This is known as the classical variation or is also sometimes called as the Capablanca variation. What score I did here was to play uh, a2 to a3 just like we had talked about and then to snatch this bishop without having to double his pawns on the c5. He's setting the queen up for recapture here. That's the main reason uh, for the move uh, queen to uh, c2. For example, after the popular uh, reply, castles king side, now pawn to a3, bishop take knights and now queen takes bishop. We see here that white has already gained the bishop pair. The dark square bishop does not have any content on the black side. So we have reached a stagnant position which is highly important and representative of some of the main issues in the Nimzo India. White has capitalized on one of the most important downsides of this position. However, White has fallen a little bit behind in development. He is using his queen too actively in the opening and that uh, the queen is vulnerable to attack. White simply has not done very much to complete his development. White knows that he needs to catch up in the development and at some time he is probably going to still be struggling to expand this e pawn into the center. It is the combination of extra space and the bishop pair that white is hoping to turn out into a deadly combination. A hallmark of the Nimzo Indian though is its flexibility for black. Black had a development advantage here and many different plans which he can try out in this position with varying degrees of success. The most standard reply here is simply to play uh, this move for b6 followed by uh, bishop to b7. Uh, that by further controlling uh, the squares along this diagonal. Perhaps at some point he might attack black, uh, you know, uh, back in the center with the move uh, c5 and sometimes uh, spe in certain special cases he may also play uh, pawn to d5. This is one setup. Another setup which has become very popular recently is to play the move pawn to d5 here. The idea here is simply to capture on the uh, c4. Now black is going to use very annoying system of development for his uh, bishop. He is trying to bring out the bishop to uh, uh, a6 at some point. Black will also uh, play uh, the pawn to c5. Uh, White has had big problems finding very much in this position as well. Though he still has a slight advantage. That is one more system. Uh, this is the one more system that is sometimes used in this position. Finally, another more flexible system is simply for black to play d6. And now to finish his development with the moves, uh, knight to d7, b6 bishop to b7 and sometimes it can also play uh, c uh, pawn to c5. Uh, he may also uh, no, contemplate pawn to uh, e5. Uh, all of these different systems give black a different positions and they each allow, his, allow him some decent chances. But white tends to uh, have just a small initiative remaining in these positions. Backing up to the position after uh, queen to c2, uh, black still has a couple of other ways to open up his attack on the center more quickly. For example, he can play this move pawn to d5 in this position, unlike the traditional queen's gambit, black already threatens to win the c4 pawn that because of the pin on the knight. Uh, just to give an example of how it works, if pawn takes pawn, white would normally just to be able to recover this pawn uh, fairly easily. However, in this position, 
the move b5 is playable uh, theory shows that white has a big problems in trying to reco recover this pawn and does not have enough compensation in the center perhaps another logical move would be uh, you know move pawn to e3 but theory has also shown here that this is not a very good move for white since white isn't really able to get his bishop out of this position and the queen is a little bit misplaced here it is not e so easy for white to just play uh, a3 to capture on uh, c3 uh, like he would like to do uh, here because black grip on the center is just a little bit too strong for white to now continue in this kind of fashion theory shows that black tends to be uh, no more or less okay if he's combining the move queen c2 and e3 together for this reason, white does not play e3. Uh, typically, white handles this situation by playing uh, pawn takes pawn in the center. Uh, it it might looks like gives up uh, gives up all the advantages in the center. However, we may have to remember that we are trading a flank pawn for a center pawn. This yields up a two to one majority in the center. Another point is that if black recaptures with the pawn, then the bishop on the b4 is not very well placed anymore. It looks like the bishop would rather be on the b uh, on the e7. Uh, where it protects against the potential pin uh, for the bishop on g5, bishop to g5. So it turns out that sooner or later black may regret having played the bishop before. This is one method for white to aim for an advantage in this situation after pawn takes pawn and pawn takes pawn in the center. He has got two, uh, two to one majority in the center uh, and he's trying to point out that bishop on the b4 may be misplaced here. Another interesting idea that black has developed in this position is that after the move pawn takes pawn, he can actually make use of the pin by capturing with the queen. This is very interesting. The idea here is that white queen is missing uh, in action from her normal uh, post on the d1 square. Because of this, black is already threatening to play uh, queen takes d4. If white plays, for example, the natural move uh, pawn to e3, uh, then we have a lot of counterplay for black after the move pawn to c5, taking down the center and creating some weaknesses. Because of this, whites tend to keep his option open uh, with the move knight to f3 in order to defend this uh, d4 uh, d4 pawn uh, and now perhaps looking to uh, play uh, bishop d2 and uh, start a thread on the queen and now quite interestingly the key move here for black turns out to be queen to f5 a very interesting move in the nimzo indian the idea here is that after the trade of queens which white normally goes for uh, black has just set up a very strong grip on the uh, e4 square but he has done at, uh, done so at a cost of his structure somewhat. Uh, he has some uh, slightly doubled pawns, but black looks okay and black going to be uh, able to get some a decent game from here. And in the meantime, you are going to have some real trouble advancing the center in the way that you did like to. Uh, theory suggests that black is very close to having a strong equality in this position, but white once again has some slight initiative. Uh, black seems to have just way too many options in the opening. We have noticed, for example, so far we have seen an early d5. We have also seen later uh, d5 after the exchange on c3. Uh, we have seen all kinds of different setups for black. It's here that I want to talk about a third aspect of the Nimzo Indian that I think it's really strong for black. Uh, so far uh, we have shown that there is a potential uh, to double the c-pawns. There is also this control on the e4 square which restrains white. However, I think the third function of the Nimzo Indian is its flexibility. Uh, black has not played any pawns in the center early and because of this he often find himself having multiple plans to address whatever system white comes up with. So backing up to the position where we are uh, exploring the move uh, queen 2 uh, c2. So white has another very popular response to the Nimzo Indian is that uh, simply get, in, get on with the development with the move uh, pawn 2 uh, e3. In this way he shows up uh, the uh, d4 pawn uh, so that it, it is not uh, too vulnerable to an early uh, c5 attack uh, and he perhaps to develop his knight uh, and place his bishop on the uh, um, bishop on the d3 uh, white hope is simply to grab the bishop pair at the right uh, moment with uh, a2 to a3 and to later illustrate this move e3 to uh, e4 uh, he is not trying to prioritize these aims over computing development he is more interested in staying at par in development with black in this line though uh, black can play with some other ideas these days black tend to lean towards playing uh, castle on the uh, king side and then bishop to d3. Uh, now black typically chooses a direct occupation of the center with the move a pawn to d5, knight f3, pawn to c5, castle on the king side. Here black has a few options all of which leads to very interesting strategic problems for both the sides. One idea is simply to capture on the c4 uh, with d, d takes c4 and then uh, on quickly you know, proceed with the development with the move for knight to b2 uh, d7. This is one idea. The main idea is for black to simply play knight to c6, 
This is the most popular, most standard idea. At this point, white finally chases in and takes the bishop pair. a3, bishop takes knight, pawn takes bishop. This is the standard Nimzo Indian structure in which white has the bishop pair and he will not have to live with the double c pawn uh, for a long time uh, uh, since he always have an option on uh, taking the d5 uh, pawn. And black often takes on c4 himself in this position. Uh, the question here is uh, whether or not white will eventually be able to make anything out of the dark squared bishop or will his double c pawns and black's knight turn out to be the most important factors in the struggle which comes up. If white, uh, white can ever achieve the move uh, e2 to e4 uh, and bringing up the dark squared bishop in the game, he often uh, wins gloriously. He often wins you know, through fantastic attacking style or through uh, outstanding endings. However, if black is able to retain this, black has an excellent counter chances. Another key line, the only other line that we are going to see here is c takes d4. And now pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, bishop takes pawn. This would lead to an isolated queen pawn structure which we have talked too much in other videos. Uh, so the battle from here about whether or not white open lines and his advanced outpost, the scope of the pieces is right. The battle here is whether or not these things fully compensate for the weakness on the d4. Uh, theory has shown that in this particular isolated queen pawn position, black is taking serious risk as the white d pawn shows con uh, contribute bit at attacking chances for white. We have looked at a lot of main lines of the Nimzo Indian. Even though it seems like the strategic content is changing quite frequently, I think you will find out there are certain themes of the Nimzo Indian that don't change very often, no matter what variation is being played. Some of these themes, for example, uh, bishop pair, uh, double c pawn, controlled by black of the light square, particularly on the uh, e4 square, uh, white struggling to achieve the move pawn to e4, and uh, you know other other themes is uh, white struggling to bring the bishop pair to play. By studying the Nimzo Indian, if you isolate these few things and you pay attention on how these particular factors influence the game, you can learn a considerable amount about chess in general and about the Nimzo Indian of course. This is all about today and looking forward to seeing you again with another opening. Thank you for watching.